Hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Flying Fish Brewing. They're out of New Jersey. Uh, they're actually out of Summerdale, New Jersey. Uh, guys, I'll be straight up honest with you. Rico's been sending me these beers and I have not been impressed with Flying Fish stuff. Uh, I just haven't. And I'm hoping this is going to change my mind. Uh, but we're going to leave it all on the table. I'm going to tell you what I think. I think it was, if I drink this beer and I think it's exceptional, I'm going to give these guys good grades. If I drink this beer and I find it to be a B beer or even a C beer, I'm going to tell you so. So uh, I'm not going to pull any punches. I never do. I may agree with how my grades may be better than what Red Beer, Beer Advocate, and Unhap says, and they may be lower or they may be the same. Uh, I just shoot from the hip, guys. This is exactly what I, I think the beer is. So... Let's get on with this one. Uh, it's got a big, long commercial description, and I am going to read this one because I'm going to give these guys the benefit of the doubt. Uh, this is a 6.9% 6, 6 ABV alcohol, and uh, they're calling it the Grand Cru, uh, Winter Reserve, and usually these Grand Cru beers are bigger than a 6.9. Usually they're 8% or up to be considered the Grand Cru. Uh, so, maybe this was the best they could do. They have this by 030517. And as you know, I am not a fan of this best by date because all that does is give these guys an extended shelf life. Whether they're giving a three month, four month, five month, six month, or even longer shelf life. That's why. Because you don't know when they say best by, you have no idea when it was put in the bottle. And it's up to the brewery to determine how long they want it to sit on the freaking shelf. So, that's a, one of the biggest problems I have with these guys. Uh, they want to put that silly ass Best Buy date on there. Of course, it's better than no date at all. Uh, I mean, uh, you wouldn't want to purchase this beer if it had been sitting on the shelf a year. And if it has a date, you know not to buy it after, the, after March 5th. That's what they've got on here. But, what are they giving it for a shelf life? Three months? Four months? Six months? Eight months? 12 months? What are they giving it? Of course, they want it to sit there as long as they possibly can before somebody buys it. And not being a hot forward beer is probably not going to go bad. But, I want to know. I want to know. If I'm going to spend my money on their beers, when was it put in the freaking bottle? Tell me that. If you can't tell me that, I'm probably not going to spend my money on your beer. That's the way it works now. I've spent tons of money on beers that were garbage because it had no date on them and it ended up being something that had lost a lot of its aromas and tastes by the time that I purchased it. So, I, it is my job, I consider it my job, and y'all know y'all get tired of hearing me because I'm a date Nazi uh, about the dating of beers, but until every brewery puts a canned or bottled date on and possibly the IBUs, if it's an IPA or, or a double IPA, and uh, uh, the ABV. We need the ABV, the IBUs, and the date on a lot of these beers. So, if it's an Imperial Stout, the month and the year is good enough. Because I want to know whether it was done in January of 2016 or December of 2016. That tells me how old the beer is already. But even though it's an Imperial Stout, that's not going to go bad. I may want to do a vertical. I may want to do a 2015 and a 2016 side by side. So that tells me if it's 12 month old beer or if it's a one month old beer. 
Just me. Just my OCD guys. Well, let's get on with this. I told you it had a big one. Uh, this Belgian style strong golden ale showcases a variety of ingredients and brewing methods that help differentiate differ differ flying fish beers. The Grand Cru is fermented at a higher temperature than our other beers, adding an undercurrent of fruitiness and clove. Although there is no fruit or spice in the beer, very lightly filtered, the Grand Cru exhibits complex mouthfeel, strong malt flavors, a spicy hot presence, and a soothing alcohol warmth. Followed by a clean dry finish, this is excellent with food as well as served by itself. The malts are two-row pale, Cara 8, white wheat, uh, Demera, I've never heard of that, Demera, sugar, acidulated, acidulated. hops are Styrian, Golding, and Columbus, which are kind of subdued hops, more like an European style hop. Uh, the yeast is Belgian, Abbey style, and original gravity, they tell us 15.7 Plato, which is irrelevant to us, uh, or to me anyway. So, without anything else we need to say, they say here it's 10 IBUs. So, it doesn't have that on the bottom. So, let me get the cap off. Well, I'll tell you, uh, they have the food frames here as a general aspartate digestive. And the meat is game and salmon, glass bar snifter, tulip oversized wine glass. I got my favorite snifter. And it says it can be sold for long periods of time. That's a pretty aggressive pour, and we didn't get hardly any head at all, about a quarter finger, just barely covering the beer on the top. It is a uh, slightly uh, darker than a golden amber, a medium amber color. Looks pretty good in glass, looks pretty filtered. I can see the light right through it. So uh, let's get a nose to it. It does have some fruitiness to it. Maybe a hint of some cloves in there. It smells pretty decent. <clears throat> For a Belgian style, I'm getting a slight hint of the Belgian yeast. Well, let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. I appreciate it, my brother. little bitter on the back, especially for 10 IBUs. I'm not impressed, guys. And I hate to say that because I was hoping this was going to be a better beer than what I've got from Flying Fish. I have not been impressed with anything that these guys produce. I would not buy this beer. I would not buy this beer. Rico, uh, I appreciate you spending your hard-earned money and sending me all these wonderful and different beers. I don't know if you've actually tried this beer or not, but it is, it is not. There's a lot better Belgian ales out than this. Well, let me step on it. Let it come up to room temperature and see where we end up. Uh, uh, not impressed right now, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Not impressed. Uh, I don't think this is. Uh, I don't think this is worth your time or money to buy this. To be honest with you, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd ever purchase anything from Flying Fish if they do decide to show up down here. I've done uh, a handful of these beers now, and none of them have been impressive to me. And I think I may have one in the closet that I'm going to dig out and put in the fridge so I can get rid of it. To be honest about it, Flying Fish, whoever's the head brewer there. I'll brew better beers than this guy's final joke. Nah. Nah. I'm going to give this a four. It's a C beer. Not above average at all. Matter of fact, it's just a little below average. And you're lucky that I'm get a three. Uh, I'm not impressed with these guys at Flying Fish at all. Nary at all. Uh, we're going to run over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 83 to good range. I think that's being awful freaking generous. And over to Rape Beer. This is more what I'm thinking. Rape Beer has overall 64. That's about where I would put it. And over to Untapped. Untapped has it at 3.55, which is their B range. I think that's also being generous. I'm not going to give it to B. 
not going to do it. It just did not impress me. A lot better Belgian nails out than this. So, uh, it's the way it is. Uh, I hate to be that way, but it's been an accumulative effect from all the different beers that I've had Rico has sent me uh, from this brewery. And uh, I have not been impressed with any of them. And uh, this continues that same line. Like I said, I think I've got one in the closet that I'm going to dig out and put in the fridge so I can get it reviewed and get them out of here. Uh, not an impressive beer company at all to me and would not spend my money on these beers. So, uh, Rico, I do appreciate it, sir, but Flying Fish uh, is not, uh, 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 don't send me any more Flying Fish beers. <laughs> Unless you've had it already and you think it's exceptional, I don't want any more Flying Fish beers. So, uh, I hate to be that way, but uh, there's too many beer companies out there producing top-notch quality beers, and this is not one of them as far as I'm concerned. So, if you've had this one from uh, uh, Flying Fish Brewing Company, uh, let me know what you think, guys. Uh, sad. It's a sad, sad thing here. I hate, I hate to do that, and I, I'm just shooting straight from the hip. Uh, these guys produce, produce some fairly mediocre beers, so far as I'm concerned. So, that being said, if you've had it, let me know what you think, guys. See you tomorrow. Let's go dig something out of the fridge.